And realizing that about Nickelback made me realize that I've made those kind of compromises in other places in my life. Places that actually matter a great deal more than just some Canadian band. This is what is truly great. Truly great. Truly great. Truly great. Truly great. Hi, so you just clicked on a video titled Nickelback is Great. You're probably either very curious as to what I'm about to say, ready to insult me in the comments, some of both, or you've already set your iPhone on fire for even displaying such a sentence in your presence. But before you turn to anything rash, let me explain. In this video, we're going to discuss what some have called the Nickelback Phenomenon. How a single band can simultaneously be one of the most commercially successful bands in the world. 50 million albums worldwide, 11th best-selling musical act of all time, Billboard's most successful rock group of the last decade, 6 Grammy nominations, 12 Juno Awards, those count, 6 Billboard Music Awards, 2 American Music Awards, 1 People's Choice Award, Canadian, and a partridge in a pear tree. And be perhaps the most despised band in history. They're overproduced, formulaic, ear garbage. And it all begins with a song you've probably heard before. Never made it as a wise man. Yep, that one. This is how you remind me. Some of you might be asking, why? Dan, why would you make this video? Well, it's because on this channel, we choose to bring positivity to the internet. And there's a lot of hate and negativity out there surrounding Nickelback. And I thought I'd try to shift the narrative, even if in a small way. So if you resonate with that and support that mission, please consider subscribing. Okay, so let's talk about Alright, before I go any further, I want to address something straight away. I'm not trying to say that everything about Nickelback is great. While I don't normally like to discuss the negatives about my topic in my videos, there are two things about Nickelback that I feel we need to discuss right off the bat. Number one, I am in no way trying to endorse Chad Kroger or his juvenile frat boy-like behavior. I am aware that he has done and said a lot of crazy and immature things in public. Those things are not great. I want this video to be clear. It's about Nickelback, not Chad Kroger. Number two, and most importantly, I am in no way implying that I accept or condone the misogynistic lyrics used in several songs that demean and objectify women. I also do not think that is very great. But ultimately, I decided that there are still things we can and should learn from Nickelback. Which brings us back to Never made it as a wise man. Nickelback's How You Remind Me was the most played song of the 2000s. According to Nielsen SoundScan, the song was played 1.2 million times on American radio. And an objective listen reveals why. It's straightforward rock. It's decade appropriate in tone. And believe it or not, it's well written. Musically and lyrically, it stands up well. But I think this song and its massive success was actually the worst thing that could have happened to the band. It instantly did two things. It forced people to listen to that same song 1.2 million times. Which I don't care how good a song is, 1.2 million is going to drive you nuts. And number two, it gave Nickelback a formula. And I don't have to explain this to you. We've all Googled Nickelback songs sound the same. We've all heard the mashups. We get it. We collectively as a society labeled them as what's wrong with rock. But what's more interesting to me is that despite this selling out, despite all the hate and abandonment, Nickelback is still making music. If you look Nickelback up on Spotify, you see that they have 313.6 million plays of How You Remind Me and 8.4 million monthly listeners. And as bewildering as that can be for some of us, it leads to my first point about why Nickelback is great. They know what they're doing. Like it or not, Nickelback songs are catchy. Now they are criticized for following a formula and making all their songs sound the same, but it can't be ignored that this formula works. What's also strange about the hate Nickelback gets for following a formula is that lots of bands and filmmakers and artists in general are guilty of the same thing, with no social repercussions. Look at superhero movies. How many hero origin story films follow the same pattern? Marvel alone has made more than their fair share of films that are basically the same. And we love them. I mean, I do too. For what they are, they're amazing. I just find it curious that for some reason, we can't see Nickelback the same way. Number two, Nickelback unites people. Whether you love Nickelback or hate Nickelback, odds are most of your friends agree with you. <laughs> we as humans are conditioned to be social animals. 
We form communities and tight-knit groups based on things we have in common. If you love Nickelback, people that don't probably never called you back, and that's okay. If you and your tribe hate Nickelback with a fiery passion, then your bond is probably strengthened by that shared belief. But sometimes, things can get swept up in a type of groupthink mentality. And for some reason, it became cool to hate on Nickelback. I mean, it happened to me. As someone who was a teenager at the time that Nickelback was popular, I remember trying to find my tribe, trying to fit in. And if hating on Nickelback was the cost of doing business, well then I could easily do that. Yet, still buy all their CDs and listen to them when no one was watching. Which leads me to my third and final point. How you feel about Nickelback reveals something about you. Ultimately, musical taste is completely subjective. There are many people out there who are musical purists. They're connoisseurs of only the finest musical quality. Perhaps they're musicians or have degrees in music and they just can't stand the simplicity or the, well, trashiness of Nickelback. They probably don't like a lot of other bands either, and that's okay. Now there are probably other people out there who are Nickelback's target audience. They've loved them for years and will continue to do so. That's okay too. But I think the majority of people fall somewhere in between these two extremes. I think how we fall says something about us. Are we bandwagon jumpers? Or are we people who will be willing to admit if we like something, even if it's unpopular? And see, to me, that last question is the most important, because I had to take a long, hard look in the mirror to decipher that for myself. And if I'm honest, in general, I like Nickelback's music. Now, not every song, but enough of them. When I hear songs from certain albums from my teenage years, I'm filled with positive emotions. I still enjoy them, and yet, I was not willing to admit that I liked something unpopular. And realizing that about Nickelback made me realize that I've made those kind of compromises in other places in my life. Places that actually matter a great deal more than just some Canadian band. This is what is truly great, being authentic, being honest about who you are and about what you like, not getting swept up in groupthink or fear of ridicule or loss of community. And the great irony here is that one of the things Nickelback is often criticized for is not being authentic. It could be argued that in joining some bandwagon to hate on Nickelback, in a small way, you're becoming like them. So, here I am. I'm gonna say it. I'm Dan Drake, and I like some of Nickelback's music, and I'm not going to apologize for it. Never made it as a wise man. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and supporting us on Patreon. For as little as $1 per month, you can be part of bringing positivity to the internet with us. Drop me a comment or a message. How do you feel about Nickelback? And is that feeling an authentic position or a pressured one? Thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in more, I recommend the videos popping up on your screen right now. They're good ones, trust me. And remember, you are worthy of love exactly authentically as you are.